2 from verse 1 to 4 and then verse 14 to 21. I'll read in your hearing this text, but the second text, Ephesians 5, we'll read together in concert from the New King James Version of the Bible. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them. 120 men and women. And they were all filled. Please circle the word filled. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verse 14. In fact, let me take it from verse 12. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? This is the observers, not the 120. Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only nine o'clock in the morning, the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my main men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. Touch somebody, tell them you will prophesy. And signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hmm. Hmm. So as a function of the outpouring or the infilling with the Holy Spirit, uh, there'll be dreams, visions, prophesying, prophecies, word of knowledge, wonders in the heavens above, signs on the earth beneath, catastrophe, calamity. Uh, at a certain point as we approach the great, awesome day of the Lord. Go with me now to Ephesians chapter 5. Um, only come in if I go out. Ephesians 5 from, let's take it from verse 15 to verse 21 together. Ephesians 5 verse 15, let's read. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. What I really need for you to grasp and prayerfully consider this evening is he says, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation or debauchery. He uses many words to translate that. But instead, be being filled with the Spirit of God. Be continually filled with the Spirit of God. How? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This evening I want to use for a subject releasing the will and the power of God in your life. 
releasing the wheel and the power of God in your life. Father, bless your word. Bless it to our understanding. But most of all, shake this place. Fill this house as with the sound from heaven and a rushing mighty wind. And then fill each vessel that listens by tape, watches by television, and even stands by night in the house of God this evening. Pass me not by, I pray in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Luke in the second chapter of the book of Acts tells us that all of these, speaking of 120 men, were gathered together in one place with one attitude and one focus in prayer. That one focus was the same thing that David desired. One thing shall I seek after, and that is to inquire of the Lord in his holy temple. They were seeking the Lord. They were seeking for God to come. And then all of a sudden, as they in one accord, in one prayer, in one place, sought the face of the Lord, suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole house. And all of a sudden they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance or enablement. We don't need a sound from the boardroom. We don't need a sound from the usher's board, the pastoral board. We don't need a sound from men. We need a sound from heaven. It will certainly get the attention of the whole world round about us if there is a sound from heaven in our lives. <clears throat> huh. and then all of a sudden these 120 men broke out speaking in a variety of languages that men from several different nations, I think something like 18 different nations, heard them speak the awesome wonders of God in their own individual languages. And then some of them mocking said, oh, these men are full of new wine. Others said there's something wrong with these guys. It provoked Peter, who up until that time was a little insipid, wavering and doubtful even of the Christian faith. So moved by the infilling of the Spirit of God, he stood up and begun to preach till 3,000 people gave their lives that very morning. From that point onwards, because of this one event, two billion souls, we understand, have been added to the body of Christ. And the name of Jesus Christ remains the most popular name on the face of the earth today. The most known name on the face of the earth today. Christianity has become the foundation and the platform for the raising up of many nations as a function. This morning, I want this evening, I want to talk to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit because the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit are little understood in the context of the 21st century church. And I want to fix some of those things. And so if you're waiting on a heavy punchline, you'll be waiting all night long. But if you're waiting to get filled with the Holy Spirit and baptize the fresh and the Holy Ghost, it might just happen to you tonight. Your life can dramatically change beginning from this evening. Regardless of whether you've been in the faith or in the house of God for 50 years, 30 years, 20 years, one year.